So good morning to you all. Good to see you again. And um, welcome to another Sunday morning service at the beaches. My name's Grace, and together with the band, we're going to lead you into a time of worship. So I'd like to kick off by reading um, a scripture from John 15, um, verses 1 to 8. And welcome to those of you who are also online. I haven't forgotten you. Um, So, Jesus, the true vine, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. You've already been pruned and purified by the message that I've given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it's severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings glory to my father let's pray father god we just thank you for gifting us another day may your word abide in us and continually cleanse us from anger hate fornication disobedience and pride thank you for sustaining us through your grace Lord, forgive us, restore us, and fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. We take the authority that you've given us and silence the lies of the accusers, the accuser in our mind. And we silence every contrary force in this place. Grant us the grace to worship you, and may we see your power at work in us. As in the words of your psalmist, As we breathe in your grace, let us breathe out your praise. In the strong name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. So let's go into a time of of worship. Please stand if you can.
Sometimes you get resistance. Don't be worried about it. Just let's keep pushing through. Let the Lord to do something wonderful today. So let's just finish on this chorus. Yeah? Thank you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory. God is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Amen. Wonderful. Please do sit down. Thank you. Okay, so I have some notices um, for us today. God is good all the time. God is good. Come on, God is good. Yes. Amen. All right. So, okay, so we have um, on Friday the 30th, we have um, the Macmillan Coffee Morning and sponsored walk. Um, so that's taking place well, at the church and... Um, Oh, my bad. I'm reading things back to front. So we had the um, sponsored work on, walk on the 20th of September, and we have the Macmillan Coffee Morning on the 30th of September from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock. And there'll be cakes and gift donations that we will take, if you have, um, to sell. All right. And then um, we also have... Um, 
the harvest weekend, which is the 1st and 2nd of October. And that in, on, that, on the 1st, we have Nigel Jones, who will be presenting details of some of the projects from Project Agri. And the theme is um, Operation Agri and Creation Order. Um, the harvest supper commences at 6 o'clock that evening. So please come prepared to pay six pounds um, for the supper, either in cash or by card at the door. Um, then the harvest celebrations continue at the All Together um, Parade at 10.30 on Sunday, the 2nd of October. And we are asking people to bring gifts of toiletries and packaged or tinned foodstuff with at least two months use by date. So don't bring in expired stuff, not nice. Um, um, these gifts will be given to the Food Bank and Christians Against Poverty. Um, so please note that we're not collecting for shoe boxes this year. Okay? And um, we also have on, um, I just wanted to say, oh, I forgot to say that we've got the church members meeting after the service today. That's important. So if you were planning to stay, please do. Okay. So back to um, October. We also have the um, youth-sponsored 5K run or walk, um, which is being uh, organized by Becca. So if you want any more details, talk to her. They are raising money on the 9th of October um, for, for Tear Fund. So the young people will be around today and next week, so don't run away, don't take off, to um, um, collect a sponsorship. So let's encourage our young people um, with this worthy cause. So as I said, if you've, if you've, got, if you've got any other questions, please grab Becca. Um, later today. Looking forward to that. I might join even though I'm not youth. Um, okay, so I just wanted to mention one more thing and um, also starting on the 1st of October is um, Black History Month and before you switch off, don't touch that dial, uh, just to explain very briefly for those of you that are not familiar with Black History Month, so it's a time uh, in October, which was started in 1987 in this country, and I think in 19, 1976 in America, where we celebrate um, the achievements and the contribution of um, black people in the community. So that's African diaspora and Caribbeans and, and uh, Americans and so forth. So it's very important because, and you think, well, so, you know, it is every day, I agree, it should be celebrated every day, but it's about remembering the positives, but in the context of that, we remember and we teach our young people to appreciate it, and the fact that, yes, a lot of the times black people are underrepresented in various areas of society, or look down, down on, maybe because of particularly because of the years of enslavement, colonization, and so on. So um, I don't want to labor the point, but it would be great if you would um, find out a bit more. And SACO, which is the Sutton African Caribbean Cultural Organization, um, which was founded by our very own Veronica, um, um, is having um, celebrating through planned events and one that you might be interested in and there are quite a few you can go to the website SACCO and check it out um, is on the 8th of October um, we are doing some work with the RSA which is the Royal Society of Arts and they're coming together with us because the theme um, this year is health and well-being and um, it's, with, it's talking about the, um, well, we are talking about the focus on health and well-being to look at how art and the artistic expression um, is therapeutic and helpful um, in terms of um, well-being and um, mental health. So 
that's me laboring on about that, but I just think it, it, it's important to explain if you're not sure. And if you need any more, any more information, talk to Grace Smith or myself or, or Veronica's around, ask, be, be bold and ask. And without further ado, um, I'd like to, if I've not missed anything, Phil, okay, um, I'd like to um, welcome our very own Rex, and for us, he holds a very special place in many of our hearts. And Rex wants to come up and give a testimony, which I'm sure will encourage all of us. Give him a hand. <laughs> How? did I get here having spent 22 years in the army? It started with I knew what I wanted to do when I left the army and it wasn't to be a church keeper. I wanted to be a security man at a barracks somewhere but you know, at your own accommodation and anything. But on the 1st of March, 72, when it was only six months to go for my release, Jean and I were in Germany and we invited a young man to lunch. And during lunch, I said to him, what do you want to do when you leave the army? He said, I want to go to Bible college. And before I knew it, that's what I want to do, came out just like that. And Jean said, tonight we will go and see the Padre. I said, no, we did. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he, uh, um, he, he asked me, well, we told him what had happened, and uh, then... Uh, I said, but I'm not educated, I'm not this, I'm not. You've got an ACE-2, haven't you? An ACE-2 is an Army Certificate of Education Class 2, so I was educated, I said. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I will write to the principal of Cliff College and uh, sometime in April we got this letter with the thing t telling us about Cliff College and what time the, when, when the term started and everything. We ended up at Cliff College. I thoroughly enjoyed the lectures and all, all the rest of it. And then we had to, we, um, had to write 1,500 words on various subjects to do with the Old Testament, New Testament, theology, and what have you. And I had to go up the lane at Cider Cliff College one night, and I said to God, you knew I couldn't do this, you knew I wasn't educated, you knew I couldn't write, you knew I... And I ended up with saying, you have got to lead us out of here. Less than a week later, the knock on our bedroom door, and the, I opened it, and there was Mrs. Do uh, Mrs. Gevington Wood, the wife of our theology tutor, with a Methodist recorder. There are two adverts in there, so um, that you might like. So we, ha I went went through it, and there was an uh, uh, advert for a church keeper at the Wallington Methodist Church, and one at the Carshalton Church in Ruskin Road. Cut a long story short, we went to the Ruskin Road one. We were there for about three years and 
things were getting a bit difficult. So I started to get the Methodist recorder. One week, the Methodist recorder wasn't there. He said, I've got the Baptist Times. I said, oh, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> and in that was an advert for a church keeper here. I said to Jean, well, what's happened to Walter? Because I knew Walter, I was your previous church keeper. I used to come to the senior men's fellowship even when I was only 40. Anyway. <laughs> um, he came and we went. We, I applied to both. I preferred the one for here than the one at Wallington. And anyway. But we applied, we got, we got the job. We had the interview and I think um, Graham Knight and was it you, Janet, on, 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 the on that committee? I can't remember. But anyway, at, we, we, as I say, we got the job and by a majority and we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves and suddenly in 82 Jean was taken from me she went up to heaven and I was shaken fortunately Paul and Val looked after me that night and I given a few weeks leave but um, we I stayed on. In October that year, I said to Paul, I'm going to join the uh, Chelsea pensioners. No, you're not. He said. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't. <laughs> so it's thanks to him that you've got me now. But uh, the way that God led, the way that we, but it had to be, what does God want me to do? And it's through that, you know, as I say, for 21 years, I wanted to go my own way. But when I said to him, I want to go your way, it was, and he has poured out blessing after blessing. As you know, Jean died or went to heaven, and he gave me Diana. Two years later, he gave me Diana. And that was only because she was going to lose her job at Hill House, because Hill House was going to be changed from being a boy's home into something entirely different and she was going to be made redundant. <clears throat> I was working in the church here and uh, one morning I was in here and I heard my name being called by this female and I went and it was Diana and I said, uh, you know, what, what, what can I do? And she said, well, I'm being made redundant and I, and I want you to come with me to the council house or, you know, get on the council list. Because Derek says, you know all about it. <laughs> well, I said, I can come and be with you and fill in, you know, help you fill in the form. So, and that is how Diana and I started. But for... Four years I was on my own, and then along comes Kathy, out of, all the way from South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> to come. You know, it could only be all, none of her daughters or children in South Africa wanted. 
but one of her daughters lived in Sutton. She says, Mum, you're coming here. And she came and we met in the dancing club and she just took to me for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and now we've been married, what, 17, 18 months? So, yeah, we, we've thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. Now, do you want me, would you like me to do a Bible reading? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't even got my glasses. Um, <laughs> Never mind. Do you want me to go and get them? I'll get them. Don't worry. If our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I am using a human argument. Certainly not. If there is, if there was, oh, if that was so, how could God judge the world? Someone might argue if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as we are being slanderously reported, as saying, and some claim that we say, let us do evil that, God may that good may result, their condemnation is, con is deserved. But... There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away, they have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open to graves, their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Run and misery mark their ways. In the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And it goes on. And then that vital verse. There is no one who has done good. All have sinned and come short of God's glory. But there is a way. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And it is only through him that we can come to know God and know that we are going on the way to heaven. It is only through his blood that can cleanse our sins. And for a long time I knew that, yes. But I still wanted to go my own way. But God said, no, I want you. And I praise his name that he changed my life so, so vividly that where I'd been a smoker, a drinker, a swearer, the following morning I was free from all that. And it's still with me. And something I'll never, never forget. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Rex, for that encouragement. And uh, we're truly blessed to have you amongst us. So let's um, um, sing a few more songs. So just join me to stand.
draw his sled. And as we sing the next song, remind ourselves that he's our strength, he's our hope, and his love is unfailing for us. take your seats and uh, Minister Phil come and lead us in a time of prayer let's continue in worship as we come before our God in prayer let's pray together Lord we thank you for the fullness of your grace grace expressed to us most wonderfully in Jesus Christ our Savior who died our death on the cross and rose again, that we might be forgiven, that we might live. Life in all its fullness, both now and forevermore. Thank you for calling us to be part of your family, God. Thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, we know we cry out to you now as God of the whole world. And we ask God for the nation of Ukraine, we ask for peace. We ask for relief for the nation of Pakistan following the flooding. We ask for you to settle the tensions in Iran. 
We ask for those places where people go hungry, that you would provide food and water and shelter, clothing and sanitation. Lord, we thank you for those who you have raised up to work for peace, for provision, for mediation, those aid organisations and agencies. Lord, we pray that you would speed their work and provide resources. We pray for our own government in a time of party political conferences and many words. We pray that your word would prevail. We ask for wisdom for our leaders in Jesus' name. And God, for those that we know personally, those who particularly need your help, your presence, your comfort, your strength at this time, We lift these names to you now in the quiet of our own hearts and minds. Father, thank you that you know us and you love us. You know these folk. We lift them to you. And Lord, we ask now that you would, we've been singing about the Holy Spirit, Lord, we ask that you would come and fill us with your Holy Spirit. In a little while as we turn to your word again and continue thinking about the fruit of your spirit, we ask God that in us, your church here, you would cultivate the fruit of your spirit. Your fruit would grow in our lives. That the name of Jesus would be lifted high, that more people would come to know him as Lord and Saviour through our witness. Thank you that you are with us every single day, God, as we journey through our lives, whatever we're up to, wherever we are, you are with us. Help us, as uh, Rex has reminded us, to choose your way, God, rather than our own. Thank you that whenever we do that, you are faithful. You'll provide for our needs and you will lead us on. Thank you that you don't need to fix us to be able to use us. Thank you that you use ordinary people like us to fulfill your kingdom purposes in your world. So we say, God, we are yours. This is your church. We're here for you. We're your people. Have your way with us. We pray all these things in the strong name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let's stand and worship before we, uh, we hear the word of God. What a beautiful name is the name of Jesus.
So we're continuing this morning in our series looking at the fruit of the Spirit, the Spirit renews. And I wonder if any of you have taken up the 9 J challenge, praying for God to grow the fruit of the Spirit in your life every day. It's not too late to join up if you weren't here last week or uh, this week hasn't been the best in one way or another. You can still join and pray each day for God to fill you with the fruit of his Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You can pray through, through the fruit slowly and ask God to show you how he wants to grow that fruit in your life day by day. I encourage you to take up this nine-a-day challenge. This week we're looking at the fruit of joy. So I want to ask, and I want to actually ask for some response, please. What brings you joy? You can have a moment to think, and then just call out. What brings you joy? What makes your eyes sparkle? What makes your heart leap with joy? Nature. 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 Family. Grandchildren. 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 Sorry. Arsenal ladies. Arsenal ladies. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. Is that it? That explains why most of you are so miserable the whole time. No. (laughs) Come on, more. What brings you joy? A smile from someone. Friends. Music. Food. Finally we get there. Food. Come on, people. Chocolate. Specific now. More specific. Wonderful. It's good to see you laughing and smiling. You know, God wants joy for us. Not just surface level. God wants deep joy for us. That's his intention for us, is joy, because he loves us. People we care about, we want them to have joy in their life, don't we? We do, because we love them. God wants joy for us. The Bible has a lot to say about joy, because God, uh, joy is God's best for us. It's his intention for us. Joy is God's idea. And it's a jolly good idea, isn't it? See what I did there? Thank you. Psalm 16, verse 11. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures in your right hand. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. John 15, 11, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. I have told you this so that, you, that, so that my joy may be in you. Jesus was filled with joy and he wants his joy to be in us. And that your joy may be complete. So if joy is such a big part of the kingdom of God, if joy is such a big deal to God, and such a big part of his desire for us, you know where I'm coming with this, where I'm going with this, don't you? If joy is so important to God, how come so often throughout history, and still today, so many Christians seem to be so flipping miserable? Why is the public face of the church so often not filled with joy? I've been challenged by this as I've thought about this, personally and as I've thought about the church, collectively. Actress Rosalind Russell famously once said, taking joy in living is a woman's best cosmetic. There's some good advice for you, ladies. It's also true for Christians. Joy is good for us. It's healthy. It's also good for those around us. And shows people who God is, what he's like. God is a God of joy. Not a miserable old man sat on his throne with a grey beard and a stick out of which comes lightning waiting to strike you down as soon as you step out of line. This is not who God is. God is filled with joy. 
We talk about it, we sing about it, but we don't always communicate this wonderful part of the Christian life to those around us, this wonderful fruit of the Spirit in our lives. The atheistic philosopher Frederick Nietzsche said, uh, in response to the question, why are you so negative towards Christians? He replied, I would believe in their salvation if they looked a little bit more like people who'd been saved. <laughs> and you can see where he's coming from sometimes, can't you? Those verses, that verse from John 15, Jesus said, I, joy, I have told you this, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Jesus, uh, in the, the next chapter, John 16, had been telling the disciples that he was uh, about to leave them, that he, would, uh, he was talking about going to the cross, that he would die, but that he would see them again. We will meet again. Those words have been important recently, haven't they? Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth, he gives an example of someone giving birth. And he says, uh, a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. Sorry, Rachel. <laughs> you will forget this feeling at the moment because of the joy of a new life. So with you, now is your time for grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy in that day you will no longer ask me anything very truly I tell you my father will give you whatever you ask in my name until now you have not asked anything in my name ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete the Christian life is meant to be enjoyed not endured did you know that William Barclay said the Christian is the laughing cavalier of Christ. What a great phrase. Christian is the laughing cavalier of Christ. A gloomy Christian is a contradiction in terms. And nothing in all religious history, says Barclay, has done Christianity more harm than its connection with black clothes and long faces. So what brings us joy as Christians? Well, joy is having a family. Let's reflect a bit more on those verses from Romans 15 that I read. The Christians at Rome were a mixture of Jews and Gentiles. And his letter to them, Paul uh, spent two chapters, 14 and 15, telling them to accept and welcome one another. See, they'd grown up hating one another. And now they found themselves together in this one family. And Paul says, well, you've got to get on with each other. You need to want the best for each other. Because God in Christ has accepted them, both of them, and made them into one people. And he uses some Old Testament verses to tell, especially the Gentile Christians, to rejoice in what God has done. He says, rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. What he's saying is, you've been brought into this new family. You've been adopted into the family of God. So you should be rejoicing. We should be rejoicing because God has made us his sons and daughters. He's called us to be his children. And this is a reason for joy. Some of us in our earthly families, you know, stuff's just a huge mess, isn't it? We have a family which is the biggest family in all of history, in all the world. We have a family that will never die out. We have a family which will last forever. We have a family through which we can receive the love of God, the goodness of God, the grace of God, and to whom we can share those good things too. Paul says the same things in Ephesians 2. He says, remember that at one time you were separate from, you were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. That's who you used to be, he says to the Gentiles. But now, in Christ, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Isn't it fantastic? Members of God's 
household. No better household to be part of. Those who were far away have been brought near. Those who were outside have been brought in. Those who were excluded from the family are now adopted as equal family members. When we put our faith in Jesus as Lord, we get a whole new family. Look around you and be filled with joy. Oh dear. <laughs> what's, the, what's the problem? You have a family in Christ. A worldwide family. Wonderfully different, wonderfully diverse. Wouldn't it be terrible if we're all alike? So boring. It's fantastic. Celebrate and rejoice in our differences. Learn from one another. Allow one another to, to, to share, to give you joy. It's not all our problems suddenly disappear. Or that life suddenly becomes a breeze. But we can have joy even in the midst of of the sorrow and the suffering and the difficulties. And we have a family who will walk with us through those difficulties and sufferings and sadness. The story of the prodigal son. Jesus told this story to illustrate the father's joy in his children. When a, a child who's turned away from him turns back, no matter what that child has done, when they turn back, there is a feast, there is celebration, there is joy. The father runs to meet the child, wraps him up in, arm, in his arms, puts the royal ring on his finger and the cloak on his back and throws the party, kills the special lamb and all the rest of it so they can have a feast. This is what it's like to be part of the family of God, loved by the father. The fruit of the spirit, joy. It's part of the Christian life because of the family relationships we have through faith in him. Joy is also having a feast. The, uh, the, you know, the concept of a feast originates in the Old Testament uh, where people were called to celebrate the good things that God gives with joy and celebration, thanksgiving and feasts. Whether it be the gift of the law, the annual gift of harvest, the word of the God through the prophets, the building of the temple, a new king, or ordinary gifts of everyday life like work and love and marriage and beauty and nature and bread and wine. All the good things that God gives, they celebrated with feasts. And I think we've lost something of that, haven't we? And it's a shame. Remember all the good things that God gives you. Every moment, every breath we take is a gift from God. All the good things in our lives. Let's celebrate them. Let's give thanks to God for them. Let's name them. Let's remember them. Next weekend, harvest celebration. Come along and let's make this place filled with joy because God provides for us. The feasts were to be morally clean. So as we thank God, we're to make sure that uh, we're not infected. For the Israelites, it was the Canaanites around them. When, they, when those people got together, their feasts were filled with immorality and drunkenness and gluttony and idolatry and selfishness. The Israelite feasts of thanksgiving and joy were to be morally clean. They were also to be socially inclusive. God lays out through uh, the books in the Old Testament that when they get together for these feasts, the orphans and the widows should be provided for. The foreigners and the strangers should be welcomed in. Socially inclusive. We need to make sure when we celebrate God's goodness that it's open to everyone without discrimination. Done in a way which actually welcomes all. Not you have to come and be like us, but you be yourself and you are welcome. So our joy comes from having a new family and from celebrating God's goodness to us to remember his gifts that he gives us in feasts. And joy is having a faith. The word gospel, I'm sure we all know, means good news, literally, doesn't it? It is good news. And when we receive good news, it brings us joy, doesn't it? Oh, dear. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry, I keep picking on you. It's very unfair. It brings us, when we receive good news, it brings us joy. Thank you. <laughs> the gospel tells us the great truths of what God has done for us in Jesus. We're forgiven. We're set free. We're adopted into his family. We're, we're blessed. God's grace and his mercy. This gives us joy. 
And it's this message of joy that we can share with those around us. What a fantastic privilege that is. Consider all that God has done for us in Jesus. And again, it's not this surface level happiness. It's a deep rooted joy in response to God's incredible love for us. As Habakkuk expresses, we can have joy in, even in the midst of suffering. We can choose joy, even in the midst of pain and anguish. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. He's choosing joy there. Do you see that? We get to choose joy sometimes. We have to make that kind of decision. Do you know what? Yeah, life is horrific and it hurts, but still I will praise you, God. Still I will give thanks to your goodness for me. I will choose joy because of who you are, which does not change regardless of my sufferings and my circumstances. Yes, it hurts. Let's be real about the pain of it. But let's not forget the joy. Let's be real about all we have in Christ. Because God loves us. Think of the Apostle Paul in prison. Acts 16, 25. He's there and he's singing hymns. Filled with joy. Inexpressible joy, he says. Locked up in chains. What a nutcase. No. <laughs> no, not a nutcase. Somebody's got, he got it. He understood. Even in my sufferings, even in chains, I'll choose joy. Because of the good news of Jesus, because I have faith, I can be filled with joy. And we have faith as Christians, we have joy as Christians, because we have a future. Because of the future. Jesus is coming again. Should we say, I don't know, hallelujah or something after that? <laughs> Jesus is coming again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He is coming Again, we have a hope for the future which is steadfast and certain. Nothing can take it away. Revelation 21, 1 to 5, uh, a picture, a vision of what it will be like when Jesus comes again. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Hallelujah. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. This is a reason for joy because of the future we have. We will share in the joy of all creation when Jesus comes again. So this fruit of, of the Spirit, this joy, this part of Christian life is ours because we have a family, we have reason to feast we have faith and we have a future. And maybe one of the reasons this fruit of the Spirit is, is often missing in our lives, in our churches, in, in the Christian church worldwide, is simply because we forget the goodness of God in Christ. Too easy to get tired, isn't it? And irritable. And then to fall into self-pity. And self-pity is a great enemy of joy. It's not that we should pretend life's problems or difficulties do not exist. But that we should remember God's goodness, even in the midst of the difficulties and the pain. Immeasurable, unfailing, never ceasing goodness of God. Always with us, always loving us. A reason for joy. To go over God's blessings in our minds. What was that old song? Count your blessings one by one. You know, name them one by one. Good advice. We should do it regularly. 
it will, it will give us joy. You know, I've met far too many grumpy Christians. <laughs> and, I, and I confess I've been a grumpy Christian. Let's be people who are filled with joy. God's desire for us. Paul wanted the Philippian Christians to get it. Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Really wanted to take them to get it. Because he says, I'll say it again. Rejoice. Be filled with joy because of God. You know, joy of the Lord can really be our strength. We're going to sing that in a moment. Now, in the midst of the difficulties of life, if we choose joy, if we remember God's blessings to us, it means we can get through those difficult times in a much more healthy way for us and for those around us if we remember God's goodness to us and all he's given us, his love for us, his faithfulness, his blessings. His life is poured into us in Jesus. We remember those things. We can get through the hard times in a much healthier way. And we can display for the world around us what it is to be a Christian, what it is to be loved by God, what it is to have a hope for the future. People will be drawn to us. And as they're drawn to us, they'll be drawn to God because of our joy. As well as because of our love for one another, as we were thinking last week. So I'm just going to lead us in prayer and then we'll sing that song. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. And maybe we can use that as a kind of, you know, sometimes we feel awkward about putting our hands up or whatever. If that's not you, whatever. Just we can use the word of this song to say, do you know what, God, I choose joy. Thank you for your goodness to me. Your joy can be my strength in this life. Maybe we will lift up our hands. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit. Thank you for this element of the fruit of the Spirit, joy. God, I want to pray in Jesus' name that you would fill us with joy. May our joy abound because of all you've done for us. May the joy of the Lord uh, kind of well up in us and overflow from us to those around us. So that, Lord, we can be in a healthier place, but so also people around us can come to know you as Lord and Saviour. Release this fruit of joy in our lives, God, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together and we'll sing.
When we can't, he can. Mm. If we can't, he can. Mm. Because we can't, he can. May our God enable us to live a life worthy of his call. May he give us joy. May he give us power to accomplish all the good things our faith prompts us to do. So that the name of Jesus, the Christ, is honored because of the way we live and we will be honored with him. Let's say the grace together now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget we've got the church meeting straight after the service. Have a wonderful week.